What's up everybody, Coach Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Valorant video, and in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the top 9 reasons why you simply won't improve, and these are things that can affect you no matter what rank you're at, and if you're caught in a rut, can't get out of your rank, then this is the perfect video for you. But the Game Leap website right now is the best place if you want to improve your skills step by step, because we have in-depth Radiant VOD reviews, advanced mechanical positioning and game sets tips, and we are just stocked full of content honestly so don't miss out on this amazing 50% off sale in the links down below but without further ado let's jump into the video now for this first big reason that you're just not gonna improve and it's jumping around to too many agents you see I know that you want to be a flex god and you just want to flex to whatever will get you the win right but here's the thing if you are not going above and beyond with impact and value every single time you are not going to be the difference maker and you're not going to be able to win a vast majority amount of your games sure sometimes you'll get carried filling and sometimes more than often actually you'll fill and you'll have duels that do nothing you have a sentinel that's entering you'll have a controller that smokes the enemy spawn you just basically will have people all around you that are not doing their job and you're stuck filling to an agent that you just can't play very well because you are not a master of that agent you see it doesn't matter how good you are at mechanical skill how good you are at fundamentals or anything like that if you are thrown onto an agent that you just don't know how to play very well you are going to consistently feed and just not get that much value i'm sure this has happened to you as well where you start playing a character that you just don't know how to do and you're just like man i wish i was playing x character because i could do so much more on that character now on top of that just minimizing the amount of agents that you're willing to play is just going to be better for you improving on those characters playing them much much more learning the intricacies of these characters so i would suggest a maximum amount of three maybe across multiple roles so you could feel but honestly Honestly, given the choice to either fill for the team or play a character that you're legitimately good at and you're confident on, play the confident character every single time because it doesn't matter if you're filling smoke, if you're 1 and 20, I promise you, your teammates will flame you regardless. Now moving on to the next big thing and really it's like a wall actually that is preventing you from improving and it's playing Kovacs and or Aimlab more than you actually play. You see, you need to be experiencing the the pressure, the movement, the recoil control, and all the different guns and abilities of the actual game. And I find way too many people that just spend hour after hour, day after day, just grinding aim trainers non-stop. Now, yes, aim trainers have a legitimate place in honing a lot of your mechanical fundamentals, whether it's flicking, tracking, or aim drills. We cover a lot of that on this channel. And we do think that overall, it is a legitimately good thing that you could be doing to improve a lot of your mechanical skill. But, and I really need to emphasize this objection, aim trainer is not going to be the thing that really makes you perform consistently in game. We're going to talk about fundamentals and different things like that later, but far and away, way too many people will be able to perform very well on something like aim lab or Kovac, and then they go into game and their aim just doesn't correlate or the gameplay just doesn't correlate. In fact, there have been multiple pro players like Soms coming out that say that aim labs and different things like that are not going to make you a better player in Valorant. And that's coming from someone who actually used aim lab and Kovac in the first place to gain a certain amount of mechanical skill and in my opinion when you're starting off and really trying to build some of those fundamentals it's a great place to be at and if you're fine-tuning certain aspects of your play like specific flicking specific tracking reactionary drills or just warming up it is phenomenal but you need to be doing the vast majority of your practice in game and please, please, you should be playing the game at least double as much as you're doing aim labs or aim trainer. Now, moving on to the next reason why you won't improve, and it's competitive anxiety. And this is something that a lot of people post in the comments, and a lot of people are talking about it, where they get an anxiety about performance. And it really causes them to be scared of playing comp or not playing comp enough. Or when they play comp, they're so anxious, they're so filled with anxiety that they might either 
either get toxic or they can't perform in game or all of these factors now i understand that being anxious is something that some people cannot control but there are things that you can do to mitigate your anxiety to help you perform far far better in game you need to be coming in every single time you play with a clean state of mind try to get to that clean state of mind however you can whether that's relaxing for a little bit vibing to some music kicking back whatever the case may be you want to go into competitive with that clean state of mind try to make sure that you eliminate all anxiety before you jump in on top of that some people get that competitive anxiety because of their rank trying to make sure that they maintain their rank and for that i would highly suggest getting an alternate account no not a smurf not one that you keep low and just try Try to farm people that are worse than you one that you legitimately work as hard as you can to get to the exact same rank as your main so that you can hopscotch back and forth back and forth this gives you legitimacy thinking that you deserve the rank that you have and on top of that you're going to be less anxious about losing your rank because you always have a second account to go to that you can always play on in the case that you drop a little bit and this really lets you push yourself and you're going to be a lot less anxious overall but the biggest thing that i could give you the biggest tip is if you ever get too high strong and you just feel so anxious and you just don't know what to do you're jittery take a step from the game go back to your calm state of mind get back into the game later on when you feel refreshed and less anxious and that's just going to give you a better experience in the game and you're going to be performing better as a result now we're going to the next big reason why you will not improve and you will not win and it's not directing games enough with communication now, you would be surprised how much a solid foundation of communication in a team really can carry a team. Just simply one person speaking up with active comms, giving some clear direction to the team can be phenomenal. And I'm not talking about backseat gaming here. What I am talking about were big things like we should all save here. We should all buy. Hey, they're always opping mid. Let's go and challenge this area instead. Or, hey, can a smoker smoke this spot? Or, hey, I'm going to flash out. Let's push on to this. This is really clear, concise communication about things that should be done, about things that people should be thinking about or communicating. Because a big problem that happens a lot of the times is you'll get in a game and no one will talk. Or the people that will talk will only say negative things or things that don't matter. There's no focus on the game and there's no direction at all. It's just a whole bunch of people just randomly flaunting about and sometimes that happens in a lot of games on both sides and it's just like a battle where people just go in like a free-for-all and it's a mechanical battle with no teamwork, no tactics, no nothing. But you can cut through that with a clear line of communication and I know some of you introverts are going to have a hard time with this but just saying a few things and just trying your best is better than saying saying nothing and being a silent Andy okay now moving on to the fifth thing that's gonna prevent you from improving and this is not focusing enough on the basics and you are probably gonna roast me in the comments down below I already know because I talk about crosshair placement I talk about a lot of fundamentals like counter strafing and different things like that but I'm gonna be brutally honest here and some of you might not like this but I have to speak the truth if you are not to the platinum rank you are a hundred percent messing up crosshair placement movement or both because that's all you need to carry yourself all the way to the plat rank I guarantee it a lot of people you see will learn these fundamentals so they'll heal them one time and they'll just think oh okay that's enough for me i already heard it i don't need to work on it anymore i already worked on it that's good enough but it's pretty much just like anything there are certain fundamentals in every single craft that constantly need to be revisited and mastered and this is the one for valorant and you really need to understand here the biggest reason i harp on this a lot is a lot of people will be trying to struggle to find all these different things all over the place like oh it can't be this it has to be my ability use or it can't be this it has to be my game sensor maybe if i know how to do 12,000 rollouts on sova i'll finally climb to gold no it's not it's your fundamentals go back and revisit them if you don't master your fundamentals then all the other stuff that you could possibly learn might get you to a higher rank or maybe temporarily boost you but you're not actually improving as a player because you're adding things on top of what is a really weak foundation now moving on to the sixth reason why you won't improve and it's lack a competitive mindset and this is what you hear a lot from some players that don't have a competitive mindset oh that operator's broken there's nothing you can do to even counter it what the heck this game sucks now yes while maybe some of the criticisms might be legitimate about what is balanced and what is fair in a game a competitive mindset means working with what you have and finding ways to either use them to your advantage or overcome them whether or not they are quote unquote overpowered or not. 
This competitive mindset means putting winning first at all costs and not constantly wishing that the game is in this perfect state where your skills will shine. This means being adaptable, working with whatever balance you have, learning new characters that are extremely powerful in the meta, and learning predominant meta strategies. This is the opposite of wanting everything to be exactly the way you want and refusing to change at all. This happened a lot back in the op meta where players would go up against an op and they would just call the weapon a no skill weapon. They would say that the person that they're up against is just absolutely boosted. All the while they just get destroyed over and over and over again by an op, never playing around op peak angles, never pre-firing any angles, never using setups or flashes, or learning the op themselves to maybe counter snipe. Now I could use the op as an example, but there's always some new example to come up. Now it's Breach, or maybe in the future it's going to be the new character Sky, or whatever the case may be, there's always something that is fundamentally overpowered, broken, or whatever. But our job as competitors first, people that want to win more than everything, we need to work with how the game is work with the game state work with what's broken and what's not and use that as catalyst to propel us to the higher ranks instead of just blaming every single loss on the intricate balance of the game now move on to the next reason that you will not improve and this is misevaluating your strengths and weaknesses now i've done vod reviews in other games a lot of the time where players will think that their problem is in one aspect right they think their problem is hey i'm really really bad at mechanics i just can't aim and then you go and you watch their vods and you find out that they are in incredible aimers and they spend all day every day practicing their aim because they think it's so bad but it's not bad and it's not holding them back and no matter how much they practice their aim they're just not gonna get to a higher rank now i'm not directly talking about valor in that example but the point remains that players themselves can often misevaluate their strengths and weaknesses sometimes you either need an outside perspective or even your own perspective watching it from the outside looking in do a self VOD and this is what I would highly suggest. You see it's really easy to think that your mistake is one thing and get tunnel vision on that thing but if you go back and watch it oftentimes you'll find that maybe you made a couple wrong decisions or maybe you were losing duels because your mechanical skill wasn't on point or maybe you whipped out your ability far too much and it got you killed. Marking down specific reasons why you died in certain scenarios and analyzing yourself or getting someone that you know maybe someone you trust and respect or someone of a higher rank so that they can be that out outside perspective to really analyze and point out your strengths and weaknesses that can be the best thing for you to really make sure that you're actually focusing your time on what is really the problem and not just wasting your time on things that you think are the problem and this is one of the biggest things that could be holding you back or you just spend hours and hours and hours grinding out something grinding out something that doesn't matter at all now move on to the eighth biggest tip that happens all the time in pretty much every competitive game and it holds so many people back and it's not taking personal responsibility you see this pretty much across the board where players will rather blame their bad teammates they'd rather blame levers they'd rather blame smurfs than their own play and i know it's hard to self-criticize it's hard but honestly we all make mistakes i make mistakes you make mistakes wardell makes mistakes every single person makes mistakes in the game now i know that it's easy to just shift blame to other people and say hey this one person did this one play bad and it threw the entire game so i am absolved from any responsibility over it but i promise you that if you had more impact and value most of the time you would have been able to come out with the win now that's not to say every game is winnable and that's not to say that you should beat yourself up over it all i'm I'm saying is that there's always more that you could apply and it's better to be harder on yourself first rather than taking it out on anyone else understanding that there were more things that you could have done in the game to make a difference that is the best way to identify those things and improve and work past them instead of just blaming all those around you and constantly wishing that you're just gonna get carried every game would it really make you feel good to climb all the way to immortal and beyond if you legitimately know that you don't deserve it if you legitimately know that if you're skills got stacked up against everyone around you you wouldn't make the cut that is never what anyone wants they want to earn that rank they want to improve and climb that is what you should be striving for and the only way to get that is through personal responsibility 
Now move on to the ninth and the last tip that we got for you on the list, and this one's pretty obvious, but I mean, I gotta put it in here because it might be one of the most important things in the entire video, and you're not playing enough to improve. Some people think that they can spend, you know, five hours in aim labs, watch a couple of videos, and play two games a week, and all of a sudden, they will climb. Well, I'm telling you, no, you're not gonna climb that way. You're not playing enough. You see, in order to compound improvement, you need to be playing in a bulk time session and you need to be playing multiple sessions in a row the problem that happens to a lot of people if you just play once a week and you don't play for an entire week is you'll build up rust and then by the time you play that next time maybe four days later you'll be spending the entire time breaking off that rust not playing to your maximum output and that is the only way to truly improve if you really want to stretch out what you can do you need to be constantly playing in that peak environment that is the way that you always improve pretty much in anything. You push yourself to the limit and then you start to push that limit even further. And then you're gonna start making plays, doing things that you before never could do. Maybe you're gonna hit a kill on one person, flicks to the next and kill them. You're gonna be like, what the heck did I just do? I can't believe I pulled that off. Or maybe after the fifth time you got flashed right into the face by a Phoenix, you 180'd and 180'd again on their flash and shot the Phoenix in the head. And you're gonna be like, whoa, what did I just pull off? How how did I do that? That is because you're pushing yourself to the edge every single game and you're playing more and more compounding that skill and as a result you're starting to surpass your limits again and again. But of course the 10th tip to surpass your limits is go right now to the links down below and get that premium Game Leap subscription because we got in-depth VOD reviews, advanced tips and tricks and much much more and right now with our 50% off sale you don't want to miss out on this amazing opportunity to pop off and climb with ease. But that's all we got for you today. Thanks so much for coming by. I'm Coach Mills, and of course, until next time.